Ladies and gentlemen, it's your friend Mike Brady from Ocean Liner Designs. Uh, anybody familiar with the wreck of Titanic knows that uh, there are parts of it that are completely missing. And one of those parts, very famously, the Grand Staircase, completely gone. There are other parts, however, the, the wheelhouse, uh, the navigating bridge, completely disintegrated. There's just nothing there. But above the Grand Staircase sat the famous wrought iron dome, a very famous decorative dome. And then sitting on top of that was a extremely lightly built weather cover, purely designed to allow light into the Grand Staircase from above. So the roof of this weather cover was covered in tiny little rectangular panes of glass. It's just completely gone. There's nothing there on the wreck. And so that has provided explorers like uh, James Cameron and uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute to park submersibles on the roof of the officer's quarters and send their ROVs or remotely operated vehicles, those little uh, robots that can swim out from the submarines and then down into the grand staircase of the, uh, of the ship and therefore accessing all the, all the major passenger decks. Today, there's, like I said, nothing there. It's just a massive gaping moor at the top of the ship. But what happened to it? People often say that the Grand Staircase dome imploded, which, uh, which makes sense, but what does that actually mean? And how did it happen? Well, something happened at the start of this year. A ship sank in Sydney Harbour, an old uh, Sydney-built manly ferry named the Baragula. And her sinking, I think, demonstrates a couple of very interesting points that can do a lot to explain what happened to some of the things and structures that are missing on board Titanic. Last week, at the start of January 2022, the Australian-built manly ferry MV Baragula sank at her moorings in Sydney Harbour. The ship was a relic of Sydney's rich maritime past, and she had plied the popular route to Manly for decades. She was retired in the 1980s and slated for conservation, but work stalled and the ship sat for years corroding away. I saw her two weeks before she sank, and it was clear that her hull was in bad shape. Tragically, on the night of January 1st, her hull probably corroded through, she began taking on water, and she sank. Now, as I record this, the ship is awkwardly positioned on her port side, half submerged, with her deck houses jutting clear out of the water. But what, you may be asking, does this have to do with the Titanic? Baragula was a steel-hulled vessel, but her upper decks were primarily taken up with passenger spaces made of timber, glass, and even lighter steel plating. Essentially, a long, lightly built enclosed passenger observation space took up the majority of the vessel's upper decks. Photographs recently taken of the sunken ship show something really interesting. Despite the fact that she had settled relatively slowly, the entire forward part of this enclosed passenger space has completely disintegrated and broken up, with tin panels floating away in clumps and bulkheads buckled and destroyed. What kind of destructive forces were at play here to cause such damage? Fortunately, while the vessel was foundering, bystanders on a nearby wharf managed to record video. I'm going to play a quick segment of this video now. It was taken from a wharf directly above Baragula as she sank, and I want you to listen extremely carefully to the sinking. Incredibly, in the video you can hear timber creaking and snapping and panes of glass as they begin to shatter against the weight of water as it presses up against the windows. What you are hearing is the effect of water pressure in action. Baragula's hull was flooding rapidly, bringing the ship lower and lower into the ocean as it continued to flood. But the deck houses and passenger spaces were not yet filled, they were empty on the inside. Here we have a pressure imbalance, and the deeper the ship settles into the water, the greater that the pressure becomes. This is the same effect that takes place when a car lands in water. 
And this has been the demise of many unfortunate drivers, as anybody who, like me, has recently taken to watching YouTube channels like Adventures with Purpose or Exploring with Nug would know. As soon as a car becomes waterborne, the doors simply cannot open. At five feet of depth, the amount of force exerted on a car door would equal about 1,995 pounds of force. That's about 904 kilograms. At a depth of 10 feet, the forces would increase to an excess of 7,000 pounds, or about 3,350 kilograms. On each car door. Now imagine these forces acting on the empty interior spaces of a sinking ship, and you begin to understand the potential for destruction. When Titanic sank, her hull naturally filled first, while her lighter constructed superstructure remained mostly dry until the very end. We've actually talked about the effects of water pressure before in relation to Titanic's funnels in my Why Did Titanic's Funnels Fall video, and now we can apply that same logic to lighter built sections of Titanic's superstructure. The Grand Staircase dome and weather cover, as it slipped beneath the ocean, wouldn't have stood a chance because it's extremely lightly built, just like Baragula's superstructure, mostly of things like lightweight steel, glass, or maybe timber. The same could be said of Titanic's wheelhouse. This was a totally enclosed space, lightly built of timber planking, so as not to interfere with the magnetic navigation equipment on board. James Cameron and his team theorised that the wheelhouse disintegrated after the mast collapsed back onto it during the final plunge to the ocean floor. But it probably isn't unlikely that being so lightly built, the wheelhouse simply broke up, just like Baragula's superstructure, as it was immersed in water. The timber planks and panels probably just didn't have enough time to saturate with water and therefore remain in place. So as they submerged, they likely began to tear themselves apart and float freely away. We can only assume that this is what happened to the Grand Staircase at some point between the initial flooding and violent impact with the sea floor. Titanic sinking was a violent affair, especially once the ship settled more quickly towards the end. We can see this very well represented in the 1997 film directed by James Cameron, where windows begin to implode, the Grand Staircase dome shatters, and great spouts of air are forced out of the ship thanks to the sudden and violent ingress of water. Based on all of this, we can imagine that, as it slipped beneath the waves, Titanic's Grand Staircase weather cover would have broken up almost immediately under extreme forces, and the dome beneath would have been shattered under tons and tons of water. That's why today on the wreck, there is not even a sign of the structure that once was, just a deep, dark well down into the heart of the wreck. So there you have it. Sinking ships are a extremely hostile environment and they can be a very, very violent uh, event. They may look peaceful from afar. I know a lot of Titanic survivors said that the ship seemed to simply slip beneath the waves but there's a lot of destructive forces at play, such as the effects of, uh, of water pressure that we've discussed today. Uh, there's a lot of examples of bulkheads collapsing, um, the, the wooden uh, separating bulkheads between staterooms collapsing while people were inside. And even down in the boiler rooms, there was a, a bulkhead separating two of the boiler rooms that collapsed, a steel bulkhead. So this stuff is, is really no joke. Well, I hope you all found this interesting. Uh, it's really tragic to see that Baragula is gone. She was just shy of, of her 100th year anniversary. So it's a, it's a real shame to see her sunk and uh, she continues to break up even while I'm recording this video and uh, there's nothing I think that could be salvaged so it looks like she's going to be scrapped in situ. It feels a bit mean to have Baragula as a, as a post thought or an afterthought to this video and make the, the focus Titanic but I just thought it really adequately demonstrated these destructive forces because the first time I watched that video of the ship sinking I was just glued to the audio, hearing the breakup and hearing all that glass shattering um, was just shockingly violent for, you know, a small ship sinking relatively slowly. You don't, I guess, realise a lot of the destructive forces at play there. So getting up close and personal and seeing a sinking ship like that is a fairly rare occurrence. So sad to see Baragula go, uh, absolutely tragic, but uh, very interesting to, to see these things demonstrated. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you taking your time to watch my videos and comment as well. I do my best to read and respond to as many of the comments as possible to varying degrees of success. Uh, I just wanted to thank all of you subscribers as well. This uh, channel has, has really taken off 
in the last few months. And uh, it's because of it's because of you. You guys, uh, you subscribe to the channel and uh, you support what I do. So I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I hope 2022 is going to be a big year. So thank you so much. Stay safe, stay happy, and I'll see you again next time.